What is up, everybody? This is Pastor Jared here with Fresh Wind Online. It is our new format of youth group kind of thing. It's a, like a video podcast type thing. We got John showing up on the side. I you, again, you were supposed to wait for your introduction. Dude, I you never said, wait for my no, cue. No, I'm not going to do that. I never wait for my <laughs> cue. I'm more important than that. John is back on with us again because... Uh, Those were happiness signs. Yeah, sure. No, we had enough people say that he did good that we figured we'd let him on again this Let's time. Let's go. <laughs> Round two, baby. <laughs> Allison, why don't you go ahead and explain this new video podcast yeah. format to everybody? So we are doing four part series that are all released on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Mm, be and there, you can, be square. You can find those on Facebook, YouTube, or the Fresh Wind app. You'll have to go through the link in the bio on Instagram to see them, though. Um, <laughs> That's shapist. Shapist. I'm not sure what that means, but yes. uh, you're a weirdo. All right. Well, um, every fourth Sunday. Yes, every fourth, every fourth Sunday. Sunday, we will be having a youth breakfast here during church service in the morning, at, and then nope, actually it's breakfast. at nine thirty. Remember, I called an audible. I had it set for the, the first during service, but it's not. We're going to meet at nine thirty, and then everyone's going to go into service oh, okay. when the kids are dismissed. Okay. But it's going to be a nice little breakfast type deal. Have your parents come anyways. It's a half hour. They can hang out, talk to each other, or they could find a place, find somewhere oh, I have no parents. Help out. And you, you get have food, no parents? So. No, actually, they're yours. Wait, are you telling me that my parents are gone? Yeah. Oof. God. This Reduce. is a sad <laughs> podcast all of a sudden. Reduce, Dad. All right, John, tell us something fun about yourself. Uh, what, something fun about myself? Yeah. I'm what's, very unfun. Introduce yourself. Oh, uh, I'm John. You know me. I'm usually wearing better clothes, but. I was working and I had to come straight here. So he works I'm at a retail like a, store. I do work at a retail store. That Don't sells, say the name though. It's a private name. It starts with uh, D. Ooh, Dunham's. All right. No. What is the <laughs> dumbest thing you have ever done to get yourself into trouble? I want to know from you guys, but also I want to know from John. You guys throw it in the comment. John, you tell me what you've done. I don't want to get myself in trouble. Bro. One time I was, um, I was like the a, thing that like, all right, it wasn't even worth the trouble I got into. Well, I was in the backyard. The behind, backyard. <laughs> behind my neighbor's garage. All right. And I was with her nephew or grandson. Oh, I And know I story. said, <laughs> I'm going to draw on their garage. I don't know why. And I did. And I started drawing. I wrote, I love you, mom. And something like, probably like, John is cool or something stupid like that to literally expose myself. And uh, yeah, and then his freaking mom caught us, or his grandma caught us, and I got in trouble, and I had to freaking squeegee it off with him. You were writing. His name was Nikki, by the way, if he's watching. You were writing your mom a love note, and she got you in trouble. Literally, yeah, bro. Yeah, at least it was nice. Mm. Well, but this is an unrelated story. I never got caught with this. I went behind my garage at a different house, the Amherst house. This is actually uh, some type of fate thing. It burned down. I used to go behind that house, and I would light shrubs on fire with a lighter I found in the abandoned lot behind it. I was just, and one time it was like, and they were like getting everywhere. And I threw the lighter away and ran away. Mom, you can retroactively smack him. I think I admitted to it like three years later. I was so guilty. As the youth pastor, I've declared that legal. All right, guys. So last week, this wasn't able to make the cut. We had some audio issues um, going into from the computer to the, the software we're using. It was Jared. Day. It's my fault entirely. Yeah. But anywho, even though Allison's actually on sound, calling you out. Come on, bro. Okay. So. We are going to do this try not to laugh challenge. Um, they they did it last week. I initially had them laughing and then we had to do refill. No, no, he didn't. Video. But this one, I can almost guarantee you, Allison's going to I've never to laugh laughed, actually. All right. Chronic edition. I got to get in the zone. Let me. Auto zone? <laughs> let me try to get the. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Going. Allison, <gasps> three finger swipe on that. There you go. All right. Three finger swipe. Are you guys ready? Try not to laugh. Serious face in three. Yeah, I'm ready. Two. Hold on. You say no. serious face. Three, two, one. Pam! Oh, Pam! Pam! Um, <clears throat> oh, Stop! Why are you doing this to me? I don't laugh at the actors. gonna laugh <laughs> you're <laughs> looking at me <laughs> no boom, boom, that guy looked like uh mark zucker <laughs> oh 
Pom pom jam 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 jam. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> That's me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy is dying on the side. Of Nobody stop. <laughs> Nobody the stop. Race for rabies. If you saw a homeless man dying on the side of the road, would you stop? Oh. I wouldn't. I would not. That's how they get you. I just watched that episode. <laughs> Dude, I actually did not. I haven't watched this in years. No. Good. Uh, I need some more of that goodbye Toby song. No. We are two in, in, into four square right. minutes of micro noises. <clears throat> no, we can't watch four square minutes of this. Why did, what do you mean four square minutes? What are you squares, dude? Minutes, I, said. Oh, I got squares oh, in my brain now. Oh, oh, this is every moment oh, of every episode. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah that is a laugh right I there. I didn't laugh. I smiled. Dude, that was. That was you can laugh at me. Dude, listen. Oh. They're praying for my downfall. <laughs> oh. 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 My worst Ooh. fear is that when I pick a baby up, my arms will just give away and oh. drop it. You think that would happen? It probably could. <laughs> All right, John. I'm gonna give you this one. Let's go, big body boy. Big body you Benz. I used to be that dusty. I was crack. Give me a three finger swipe again. There, there we go. go. Back to our notes, so we kind of stay on track here. Allison, you lost. I knew that one was going to get you. Yeah. Trash. <laughs> that I'm was looking, rude. I'm Trash. scouring YouTube, and I'm like, four minutes of Michael Noises. I've only watched the whole series like 10 times through. It's okay. <laughs> we both know it's been like 10 times, 10 times. Yeah. Um, Comment if you... Comment John is awesome. Just because. <laughs> <laughs> Just, just because. All right, All right. guys. <laughs> I just need that validation in my life right now. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna jump into the lesson today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, today we're gonna continue the series where we're asking questions. Um, today our big question is gonna be: When I'm hurting, why does God feel so far away? That is a big question. Uh, I think that's a question a lot of us have, and a lot of us don't uh, want to address. We want to appreciate those questions. Because God appreciates our curiosity and appreciates us searching him. And so we're going we're gonna to step into that and have ourselves search for God in these questions and see where he is. So, um, uh, John, have you ever felt like uh, you shouldn't have ever had questions like this? I know it's kind of just random, but it's in the notes. So I'm going to throw it at you. I don't, I don't know. I feel like I don't question, like, where's God for me? But I feel like it, it comes on my mind when I'm like, He's got to fall away when I think about people who like die young, okay. like like people who die of cancer at like twenty two. It's like, bro, they didn't even get to live. But yeah. like, and so that's crazy. It is. There's definitely times that we have questions like that, like what happened in this situation and what happened, um, like what is going on here. Uh, last week, uh, we had a question that I'm completely blanking on, so I'm sorry for that. But this week we're asking, stinker, when I'm hurting, why does God feel far away? And so we're going to address on that, address that. Allison, I'm actually going to have you read a couple verses out of Psalm 22. Uh, we're going to hop around a little bit. So go ahead and read verses one. I have first. no shoes on right now. Yeah, John really wanted everyone to know that his feet smell disgusting. They don't. They do not. Rank. Let me get on trial. All right, Allison. Verses so, one and two. Uh, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why are you so far from my deliverance and from my words of groaning? My God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. By night, yet I have no rest. Go ahead, jump to six through eight. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by people. Everyone who sees me mocks me. They sneer and shake their heads. He relies on the Lord. Let him save him. Let the Lord rescue him, since he takes pleasure in him. Mm, I am a worm, but not a man. That's like that's some sorrow. Earthworm Jim type beat. <laughs> All right, Allison, verse 11. Go ahead, hit us with it. Don't be uh, don't be far from me because distress is near and there's no one to help. So this psalmist, who is David, actually, is talking like, God, why have you forsaken me? Uh, asking God not to be far from him. And so the, that feeling we have 
isn't something that's the Bible hasn't felt. I think that's like the big one of the big takeaways from this lesson is that um, when you're having these questions, you're not like crazy. You're, you're not, not alone in it. Yeah, you're not an outlier. Like everyone has had these questions. Everyone's lamented. Everyone's been like, man, this has been a really hard week. Mm -hmm. Where are you, man? And so we got to We got to. You're giggling. <laughs> you I was thought not, of something. I was not. I was just caressing the mic with my mouth. Well, I'm glad the camera wasn't on you then. <laughs> That's a good day. <laughs> Ryan, don't use that mic ever again. <laughs> All right. I want to jump to Here's Psalms, mic, Psalm 42, 9 through 11. It says, I will say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about in sorrow because of the enemy's oppression? My adverse adversaries. I always say adversary. My adversaries. My adversaries. Adversaries. My adversaries taunt me as if crushing my bones while all day long they say to me, where is your God? Why, my soul, are you so dejected? Why are you in such turmoil? Put your hope in God, for I will still praise him, my Savior, my God. There is such Golly. an important part. Crushing your bones sounds like a one-time deal, bro. Oh, it does. He sounds so miserable. But, John, what do you see in that that is so important that I think we all need to take away? Uh, when he says, put your hope in God. For I'll praise him, my Savior, and my God. Oh, that is so important. That when we're just in the middle of it, just the midst of just agony and pain, just feeling like we're being attacked by the enemy, that we are we're putting our hope in God. Yeah, he doesn't want you to keep your feelings like suppressed or anything. And um, I think it's just important to uh, just keep trusting him. Yeah, <laughs> feel everything you're feeling. Everything you're feeling isn't crazy. Like. Jesus felt this, believe it or not. You know, when Jesus was on the cross, he, he said, God, why have you abandoned me on the cross? And there's like all kinds of debate as to why he said this. Like some people was talking to himself. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, <laughs> technically. Uh, Trinity. You made yeah. it. You made the Holy Trinity humor. Congratulations on that one. You win. Holy Trinity humor. Sounds like a weird sub meme. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is. There's all kinds of debate as to why he said it. But that's just too much to get into in a short video and so just know that this was a place of like serious serious turmoil and serious pain like honestly think about it if you're getting crucified it's it's we could say it's I'm less cool, than ideal bro. i'm cool you'll pass on that i'll pass all right that's one i don't want to try either yeah. so think about getting crucified <laughs> i'm cool bro when we are hurting where is god let's let's just answer the question head on john go ahead and read hebrews 1 1 through 13 that is the red Awesome, red bro. spot your your bible's my bible's upside down on you listen bro i can read upside down what are you talking about hold this and go Whoop. listen i'm not mm. the smartest guy in the world uh the room you're not like i have scott said anyway what are we talking about hebrews 1 1 through 3. One, one, three. long ago spot god spoke to the fathers by the prophets at different times and in different ways in these days he has spoken to us by his son god has appointed him heir of all things and made the universe through him the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact expression of his nature, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Don't talk about the way I say hair. I know it's air. I don't care. I don't care. I do not care. All right. We do not care. Man, you're talking so loud. We're picking up the echo off the, the other side of the. Uh... That's right, bro. My, my, my voice travels through the world. Oh, my goodness. All right. There's earth four, to earth. There's four points I want to pull from this. I'm going to hit two. Allison's going to hit you. The first one is that God isn't far away. In, in Jesus, God came to earth to be close to us, physically close to us. And we also have the Holy Spirit in us. So he's feeling all of that, just like he felt all of that with Jesus. And God doesn't leave us when we're hurting. And Jesus, God actually came to earth in order to reach out to us. That it was a uh, God physically coming to earth to spend 33 years with us. Spend time Making tables, bro. Imagine making tables all day. Well, he did more than making tables. He was definitely a carpenter. What, do you, think, what do you think he you were making true. back then, dude? They didn't understand anything. They knew tables and chairs. He wasn't making anything very complex. He was making. I guess he was God, so he probably didn't know. Right. He... I was going to say. Honestly, <laughs> that would be that would be He a makes question. Like the craziest triangle freaking thing. They're like, what is that? He really just made like a rocking chair or something. Literally. Like something like, so that complicated. Is crazy. And it's just blowing <laughs> people's mind. Because, they're like. Yeah, because God isn't limited by time. And so it's like, whoa! Jesus is carpentering a uh, billiards Bro table. I had to lathe all day, though. Imagine carpentering. lathing. Carpentering. <laughs> Look up the word lathe. All right, Allison, what are the next two points we wanted to walk away with? God isn't disconnected from our hurt. So through Jesus, God um, lived a whole life on earth. He got to 
feel the pain. Oh yeah. Um, Splinters. And not just, not just the pain. From the carpentry. Of, yeah. And not just the pain of the crucifix, but the pain of his friends dying. Mm -hmm. People he knows and he loved who died. And he knows their soul and he knows if they believe, if they're going to heaven or hell and all of that. But Jesus still wept. He still missed them. He felt all of that emotion that we feel. And so um, God also doesn't ignore our hurt through Jesus. He, God's heart, <laughs> sorry, okay. through Jesus, he shows us that God's heart is full of compassion and love and care. That is so important. So important to be willing to do everything that Jesus did for us because he loves us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And that's what we want you to walk away with. And so when Man. when you are hurting and wondering where God is, and I, I want you to first and foremost know that God is still here. No matter if it's your fault or if you did nothing wrong, God is still with you and God knows exactly what you're feeling. So you need to just take a breath and turn to God. Pray. Honestly, just praying one of those prayers where you're like, it's just a hard prayer where you're just like lamenting and you're saying those things like, God, why have you abandoned me? But at the end of it, you've put your hope in Jesus. Those are the prayers I'm talking about. And those are the prayers and those are the, that quality time you spend with God where you work on that relationship with God that is going to change your life radically. And that's what we want from you guys. We want, we want to see you guys grow, whether this is a parent watching or whether this is just one who found this on, someone who found this on YouTube or whether this is one of the youth and Freshman Youth, or maybe this is someone who's thinking about coming to Freshman Youth. Come. What we want I'm is here. to see you change drastically. John, we want them to come, not stay I'm away. here. We're trying to I'm bring here. them in. We want them to come. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. John. One last you... thing I have to say. Go ahead. Speaking more uh, King James Version, drop a couple sayeths and doeths on them, you know, All just right. because. I think it's really important. John, John goes to the First Baptist, so they, they're they there. No, I don't. They're King James or nothing. I hate the King James. Listen, listen. You don't hate the King James. Get yourself a CSV Bible. Or what are they called? I think you just mixed two versions. CSB Bible. I said that. Please stop. All right, John. <laughs> and a Moab. <laughs> We're going to cut the whole end of this now. Right. Don't cut any of it. <laughs> All right, John. Close us in prayer, please. <sighs> Dear Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for allowing me to fly down the highway and get here in time. Uh, thank you for a good recording session. I'm glad that we were able to do it and get it done. Uh, thank you for just allowing us to convey this message to these people. And uh, thank you for not letting me laugh when I watched that video because it was not funny. Amen. Amen. All right, man. I love you and I love you guys. And I'm so happy you tuned in for us. Allison, what do we have to remind them about that's coming this Wednesday? To so tune in on Wednesday at 6 p.m. And what else is happening on Wednesday? Second Wednesdays of every month. Yep. Uh, we're going to have some like a fire or something at our house. Yes. A fire. <laughs> if you are watching this video, get Dude, reminded literally... about it. About so, that. Because you're probably late to it and uh, mm -hmm. you can come anyways. Still come. That's totally fine. We'll but send out a text or something. You're most likely late. <laughs> no. So get the information from the app. There's an events page. Hit that up. Get on there. Come to our house. I was talking about something in the past. Calls. John, I don't know what you're doing, but you're going to be there. Maybe. If you work. I'm I think I'm free. I'm going to. Is it this Wednesday? Cut the electricity yes. to the place you work so you can be there. <laughs> Dude, do it, bro. They'll literally pull out a generator from the freaking back room and just keep going like nothing happened. Oh, you're the best. It's All right, guys. Pouring the rain. They're like, no, we're not closing. We love you guys. We hope you have a great night and uh, we'll talk to you later.